Hello and welcome to this abdominal palpation tutorial. The first thing that I want to point out to you is that abdominal palpation is always done in the context of a complete physical examination of the pregnant woman. However, for the purposes of this tutorial, we're just going to be focusing on the clinical skill of abdominal palpation. We will be looking at preparation, inspection, palpation, auscultation, documentation and also some potential actions that may need to be taken. So in preparation for abdominal palpation, first you must gather your equipment. You will need a single-use tape measure, a pinard stethoscope, a watch with a second hand, Doppler and ultrasound gel, tissues and the relevant documentation. You must explain to the woman what you are going to do in order to gain her consent. You must ensure privacy and also attend to hand hygiene. You should ask the woman if she would like to go and empty her bladder. You should advise her that if her bladder is full, the palpation may be uncomfortable. You should also make sure that she is comfortable. Perhaps she might need a pillow. You want to be sure that the woman is positioned in such a way that will prevent aortal cable compression. A semi recumbent position is appropriate. In order to perform the abdominal palpation, the woman will need to expose her abdomen. You should ask her if she would mind perhaps just lifting her shirt up as far as the top of her bump, ensuring that you maintain privacy and dignity and only expose her as necessary. You should also ask her if she could just rest her arms down by her side, and this is to ensure that her abdominal muscles will remain relaxed. Now we are going to move on to inspection. We are going to be looking at the size of the abdomen. This may be affected by obesity, lax abdominal muscles, multiple pregnancy, poly and oligohydramnios, fetal size and lie. We will also look at the shape which may give an indication of the lie and the position of the baby. We will look for any skin changes that are associated with pregnancy, any scars that may be related to her medical and surgical history, and we may also observe fetal movements. First, we are going to look at the size of the abdomen and determine is it appropriate for the gestational age. Next, we are going to observe the shape of the abdomen, which may indicate the lie. An ovoid shape may suggest a longitudinal lie, whilst a broad shape may suggest a transverse lie. We will also look for a saucer shape indentation, which may suggest an occipital posterior position. We will now observe the skin and see if there is any rashes or any signs that the woman has been itching. You may see some stretch marks or striae gravidarum. You may also observe the linea nigra, which is a line of pigmentation caused by increased melanocyte stimulating hormone during pregnancy. We will also observe to see are there any scars on the abdomen, perhaps from previous abdominal surgery, such as caesarean section. During this time, you may observe some fetal movements. We should also take this opportunity to ask the woman about how the baby, baby's movements have been over the past 24 hours and if they are falling into the baby's normal pattern. Next, we're going to move on to palpation. We will be determining the presentation, the degree of engagement, the attitude, the lie and the position of the baby. We're going to start with synthesis fundal height measurement should inform the woman that using your hand, you're going to feel for the top of her uterus or womb. You will then move your hand down until you feel the curved border of the uterus. You will inform her that with your fingers, you're going to measure how much the baby has grown. You will determine how many finger breaths the border of the uterus is below the zippy sternum. Now you are also going to use a tape measure to measure the baby's growth. 
You should inform her that you need to measure from the pubic bone. She may need to loosen her clothing just a bit. Ensure to keep the area covered in order to maintain privacy and dignity. Inform her that you're going to measure from her pubic bone all the way up to the top of her uterus or womb. You will keep the centimetre side down to prevent bias and you're going to measure from the upper border of the symphysis pubis all the way up to the fundus of the uterus. The frontal height measurement generally equates with the gestational age, with one centimetre on the measuring tape equating one week of gestational age. Now we are going to move on to the deep pelvic palpation. Here we will be determining the presentation, which is the part of the fetus occupying the lower pole of the uterus. We will also determine the attitude, which is the degree of flexion, and also the degree of engagement, which is the degree to which the widest transverse diameter has passed through the pelvic brim. You should inform the woman that you're going to ask her to take a deep breath in and that while she breathes out, you're going to press in here with the pads of her fingertips. So now you're going to ask the woman to take a deep breath in and to breathe out slowly. You're going to press forwards and downwards to determine what is there and also how many fifths of the baby's head is palpable above the pelvic brim. This will then determine the degree of engagement. A head will feel firmer, more rounded and the buttocks will feel softer, less blottable and less clearly defined. So it feels like the baby's head is down and now I'm going to feel where the buttocks is. You're going to palpate across the fundus of the uterus. The breech will feel softer and broader. You have now determined that in this case the presentation is cephalic and the lie is longitudinal. We are now going to move on to lateral palpation. We will be determining the lie. The lie of the fetus is determined by the relationship of the long axis of the fetal spine to the long axis of the maternal uterus. We will also be looking for the position. With the longitudinal lie, the position of the fetal spine indicates the position of the fetal head or occiput to a pelvic landmark. We will also be assessing for the volume of amniotic fluid. We will tell the woman that now we are going to find out where the baby's back is. Using one hand, you're going to splint one side of the uterus, and using the other hand, you're going to determine whether the continuous resistance line of the fetal spine or limbs can be felt. Now we are going to repeat the process on the other side. This side feels smoother. It feels like the baby's back is over towards the left side. You should ask her where she normally feels kicks. The limbs will generally be located where she feels the kicks and this will give you another clue with regard to the baby's position. Now that you know where the fetal back is located, you can determine where to auscultate the fetal heartbeat. You will inform the woman that now you're going to listen to the baby's heartbeat. But first of all, you will need to check her pulse. By doing this, you will be able to differentiate between the maternal and fetal heart rates. You will place the pinard on the abdomen at right angles to the fetal back or shoulders. Do 
You will keep the pinard in place with your ear and remove your hand to count the heart rate. Whilst doing this, you will be palpating the maternal radial pulse to ensure differentiation. The midwife should auscultate the fetal heart rate for at least one minute. The fetal heart rate should be in the range between 110 and 160 beats per minute. The midwife should also note the regularity of the fetal heart rate and also the presence of accelerations or decelerations. In this case, the woman has also asked me if she can listen to the fetal heartbeat. To do this, we will place the Doppler with some ultrasound gel over the same position over the baby's back between the shoulder blades. You have now completed the abdominal palpation. You should make the woman comfortable. You should document your findings. This sh should include the woman's comments and observations, the fundal height measurement, the lie, position, presentation and degree of engagement, the presence of fetal movements, the fetal heart rate and any other relevant findings. You should explain all these findings to the woman and take any action that may be required. In some cases, this may require a referral to an obstetrician or an ultrasound appointment. You should take some time to practice the skill of abdominal palpation. First of all, you should focus on the more technical aspects, such as hand placement, using the tape measure and using the pinard stethoscope. Then you should move on to incorporating other aspects, such as communication and documentation and how to incorporate this clinical skill into an antenatal examination. It may also be useful to review this video before going on clinical placements.